How's it going? Welcome back to your boy TN Smooth back here with another video today. And today, you guys already know we're doing the week 11 top 25. Like I said last week, I'm just going to start calling it the college football playoff ranking once we get to week 10 because it's essentially what it is. So I'm going to go th throw up the old poll up on the board for you. That was week 11. Uh, that was last week. We all had. Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, and TCU all at number four. This week, um, uh, not not really any any room to change. Um, we got Tennessee number five, and then LSU at number six. So the two that's out. They did do it different this week, though. And and on Tuesday, when the college football rankings came out, they did do it. Uh, they put like the the top seven I mean the top yeah the top seven on the board so they put five six seven the top three that was out up on the board so that was a little bit different to see normally it's five and six um, but yeah nonetheless we're gonna go ahead and get into um, the new poll uh, one thing to say is Louisville lost Texas lost Liberty lost I think even Tulane lost um, and and Oregon lost, so we all know that those are going to go down. UCLA also lost, but the question is, how far will they go down, and how far will some of these teams go up? Uh, number 23, Kansas State. Number 24, Washington. Washington had a good win. Uh, number 25, Florida State. Number 14, P Penn State. Number 15, North Carolina. Number 12, Alabama. How far will some of these teams go up that one? Also, UCF. Uh, Ole Miss lost. How far will they go down? You're about to see. We're going to go ahead and put up the new poll week 12 of the top 25 up on the board. And I will tell you that the top four teams did not change. The top six teams actually did not change. Here's my week 12 top 25. So we got Georgia coming in at number one. That doesn't even need any explanation. I, I'm not even going to explain that. Uh, Georgia, I mean, they're for a minute, 24-12 to 12 against uh, Mississippi State. You know, they didn't really struggle, though. They did end up winning that game, I believe, 45-20. to 20. So, Georgia stays number one, absolutely. Uh, no reason to knock them down. Um, they won. They won in big numbers, so they stay up. They stay number one. Didn't even really need to explain that, really. Uh, we're going to do different. Uh, after I do the top four, we're going to go down to the bottom and then work our way back up. Michigan stays in at number two. I did not move my top six teams at all. Uh, they all won. They all stayed. Uh, number two, Michigan. They won. They stayed. Number three, Ohio State. They won. They stayed. And it's plain and simple. Number four, TCU. They won and they stayed. You know, you can debate, you know, moving TCU down. I mean, they they did kind of struggle with Texas a little bit. It was 17-3 to three for a while. But then Texas had that fumble. There's the, it looked like it was going to be the end of the game. Of course, I'm rooting for Texas at this point. I'm a Tennessee fan. I'm rooting for anyone in front of, <laughs> in front of Tennessee right now. But I'm realistic when it comes to these rankings. I'm not going to put Tennessee at number one just because I'm a fan. I'm not going to put Tennessee above TCU just because I'm a fan. I'm, I'm trying to do this in a realistic way. I'm trying to do this in a, in a way that's fair to, to, all, to everyone, right? Of course, people are going to disagree with it all. I, I'm in a group with a bunch of Tennessee fans that does not think that TCU should be ranked over Tennessee. They think that Tennessee should be number four, even though they have a loss on the record. And at that point in time, you just got to ask yourself, to you, does a loss matter? Does taking an L in a game, does having a loss in your loss column matter more than it doesn't? Because TCU does not have a loss in their loss column. And I know we can get into whole, that whole who have they played type deal. And, you know, it happens with Tennessee a lot. Who have they played? Well, Tennessee has played number one Georgia. They've played uh, number eight Bama on this list. They've played uh, number 24 Florida that I have ranked on this list. They've played Kentucky that was ranked at the time. They've played number six LSU on this list. So they have played quite <laughs> a few people, and they only have lost one of those games to the number one team in the nation. So, you know, I'm not making an argument for them to be over TCU. Um, I think that if it comes down to, as of now, it doesn't really matter because what really matters is the last week's poll that comes in right before college football playoffs that says who's in and who's not in, right? That's what really matters. This, this week don't really matter. Next week don't really matter. The week after that don't really matter. What matters is after the championship games have played and the college football playoff committee announces their last college football playoff rankings, 
That's what really matters. So at this point in time, it's all just speculation. TCU, for all we know, could go out and lose their next two games, and then Tennessee gets in. Ohio State could do the same thing, and then LSU gets in. Michigan, and Georgia. I mean, I'm not don't think Georgia's going to lose to Kentucky or Georgia Tech, but I'm just saying. Um, you know, what I'm saying is these weeks – polls don't really that that much matter it's just something that we do uh just to say who's in this week if it ended right now today this is who would be in yes but as things change you know you you might have to take in but college football playoff committee takes in a lot of different factors they take in losses they take in wins obviously wins and losses are the two biggest things they take in but then they also break things down if they have a if they have a you know a, a tiebreaker almost type deal they got to come in and and see how many points did they score how many points did they allow do they blow them out you know do they look like a playoff team they've got to factor in all this stuff so if it came down to it you know, I have Georgia 1, Michigan 2, Ohio State 3, and TCU 4. Right now, today, if it ended, this is what I would have, right? But it's not ending today. You, you have two more regular season weeks. Then you have call, uh, the play uh, – I can't even call, talk today. Then you have the uh, conference championships, right? So TCU is probably going to go to their conference championship, right? We already know Georgia and LSU is. Uh, we all know that probably Georgia is going to beat LSU, I would think. Uh, I mean, obviously, LSU. I mean, they 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 won over Arkansas 13-10, whoop-de-doo. But uh, LSU, I think, just, I think they just show up to games that are important. Like, I'm not saying that the Arkansas win is not important, but, like, if they're playing, like, let's say they were playing Texas, I think that they would show up a little bit um, off. Whereas if they're playing Georgia, they might show up to play more. Uh, not saying that they could compete with Georgia or beat Georgia. I think that they can compete with them. I don't think that they can beat them. Um, they did get blow up by, by Tennessee, but as I always have said, that is a noon game. You're talking about or, – or 11 a.m. game, their time really. You're talking about an 11 a.m. game versus 7 p.m. It's totally different in Death Valley. I'm a Tennessee fan, and I will even say this. If we have played them at 7 p.m. at night, I don't know that we I, – I still think that we win the game. But I don't think that we, we blow them out 40 to 13. I think it would have been more of like a 30 to 20-something scoring game. I don't I don't think it would have been that big of a margin. But it don't matter. That game's already played. That game's out the window. That game happened five, six weeks ago. That, that game's irrelevant right now. What? But what I'm saying is if we come down to a situation and it's the last – playoff ranking week and they're about to release the last college football playoff ranking you know they're going to go by you know they're not just going to go by wins and losses they're not just going to say oh well tcu has uh you know 12 wins tennessee only has 11 we got to put them in no they're not going to say that i'm i'm not saying that tcu won't make it i'm just saying they're going to go off of well you know how many uh ranked teams did they play okay how many non-ranked teams did they play out of those non-ranked teams that they did play, were they good teams? Were they Division One teams? Were they Division Two teams? Were they Sun Belt Conference teams? Whatever, you know. They're also going to go off how many points you scored. That's the reason when you saw Tennessee play Missouri this week, they played Missouri and they won 66 to 24. At halftime, Missouri had 24. So Tennessee kept did not take their foot off the gas at all. They kept going. They scored a touchdown with 36 seconds left in the game. If I had the game won, for sure, they scored that touchdown won. Probably to break, probably to break the record. I think it was the most points Josh Heupel had scored as a coach in a long time or ever. Uh, I remember it popping up on the screen, but I don't remember exactly what it said. But I know it's a lot of points scored. It also uh, put us to the point where we've scored two 60-point games this season and like three or four 50-point games. So that was a pr impressive. But it also was stylish points for the playoff committee. Tennessee's still trying to make the playoffs, right? It's going to be hard for them to get in. I still think that they'll get in, but I think it's going to be a little bit of a challenge because you're not going to an SEC... Uh, championship game. So it's going to be hard to get in with the one loss and with not going to the SEC championship game. If you had one loss but you still go to the SEC championship game, there's still a point that you get in. But then you have to win that game. So it's almost better that they're not going to the 
uh, SEC championship game because they probably would not beat Georgia. So then they w- then they wouldn't get in because then they would go down again because they just lost. And then they would have two losses. So I'm almost kind of glad that they're not going. Well, they wouldn't go against Georgia anyway, so I don't know why I'm thinking that. But uh, if they went against LSU, I think that they would win. I don't know why I would think they're, they're both in the SEC East. Brain fart moment there. But – I say all that to say, if it comes down to it and it's the last week and they're and they're having to decide, they're going to go off of many different factors. And when it boiled down to it, if it ended right now today, I mean, Tennessee would have a strong argument with that last game that they played, putting up stylish points against Missouri. It is Missouri, yes, but they've also blown out Kentucky, who's been ranked two or three different times this season. Uh, they've also uh, beat Florida, uh, who was ranked earlier in the year, even in the AP poll. They also beat Alabama. Uh, and they lost to Georgia by 14 points. So I still think that they – it would be hard. They would they would be decide in between TCU and, ten, and Tennessee if it ended right now today. By the end of the year, I think they're going to blow up South Carolina probably. Uh, I don't know. That, that game's a little bit of an iffy one. It's it's at night. I know that williams Bryce Stadium can get up there at night. Maybe not on the, uh, on the uh, level of Death Valley or anything, but I, I think that they could still get up there. Uh, and, and cause a little bit of a ruckus for the uh, opposing team there, uh, but I do think that they find they they do win that game. Tennessee, I'm talking, and then they blow out Vanderbilt. Um, so I mean, not really. Once they lost that Georgia game, they aren't really playing anyone else um, that's going to really help them to get in. Uh, but if they blow all of them teams out, I think that, that would help them. And then Ohio State and Michigan plays, so one of them is going to have to lose. How far do they fall when they lose? Um, I think they fall to at least probably five or six, so then right there helps Tennessee get in. The only way that I think Tennessee does not get in, because if it comes down between Tennessee and LSU, Tennessee's over LSU, you would think, because they beat LSU, and they have less uh, losses than them. Um, So the only way that I think LSU would get in over Tennessee is if they beat Georgia in the SEC Championship and went out. Then... Yes, LSU gets in, even as a two-loss team. I'm putting LSU in. I know that maybe some people, other people think different, um, but that's kind of how I would go with that. Um, so you got LSU at six. You got Tennessee at five. Tennessee plays South Carolina this week. We'll see how they do. Uh, you got Utah at uh, number seven. You got Bama. They beat uh, Ole Miss. They had them at number 12. I bumped them up to number eight after that win. Still don't think that they get into the – no, I still don't think they get into playoffs because they're not getting in. Uh, they lost to LSU, so they're not getting in over them. They lost to Tennessee, so they're not getting in over them. They're not going to an SEC championship game. So, yeah, Alabama does not get in. Really haven't seen um, a recent year in history where Alabama was playing a game in Week 12 and did not have a chance to get into the SEC championship. But it happened. They did not have a chance when they were playing Ole Miss this week. It was either Ole Miss or LSU. Ole Miss's chances would have stayed alive if they would have beat Alabama, but they could not do that. Um, So uh, LSU locked it down and uh, locked the West up. Georgia locked the East up. They needed either Tennessee to lose or they needed uh, to win. Uh, And they did end up winning. Tennessee ended up winning, so that didn't help them. But then they ended up wrapping it up uh, against Mississippi State. Even if they didn't win that game, they they ain't losing to Kentucky, I don't think. So, um, yeah, Georgia Georgia was going to win the East. It was inevitable at this point. Uh, So then you got UCS at number nine. They had a good win. Clemson got back on the winning track. I put them in at number 10. Uh, Penn State won uh, their game, put them in at, at 11. And then North Carolina won their game. They bumped up from 15 to 12. Ole Miss, first team that's lost in the top 15 right here. Um, there's only two teams that lost this week that's in the top 15, actually. Uh, Ole Miss is one of those teams. They lost to Alabama. I got them in at number 13. Uh, and then Washington. Washington came storming up, man. I had Washington all the way down at number 24, I believe, last week. And they came all the way up to number 14. I had a good one. But I, at first I had them at 17 or 18. But then as as I was ranking more teams down, because they were losing more teams down and down and down, I had to end up putting uh, Washington at number 14. Not any discredit saying that they're not the number 14 team, but... Um, they did have a good win there, so I put them in at number 14. Oregon lost. They bumped down to number 15. They were number 7 last week. They still had a little bit of a slim chance to get into the playoffs. 
They're, after their week one loss to Georgia, they've won out up until this week. So they set a little bit of slim chance. I heard them talking about it on the, on the uh, college football playoff rankings last week on Tuesday. They were talking about Oregon and if they would pot potentially get in over Tennessee um, or not. And um, they showed this week that they are not going to because they lost. I still think the college football playoff committee puts Oregon around 12 or 13 probably, but I've got them in at number 15. Uh, UCLA lost. They're at number 16. UCF won their game, so they're at number 17. Uh, Kansas State won their game. They're at number 18. And then Florida State also won their game. They're at number 19. I had them at number 25. They get up, bumped up to number 19 now. Uh, Tulane and Liberty both lost. So Tulane goes to 20 and Liberty goes to 21. And then Oklahoma State. These are the four new teams I got in this week. Oklahoma State, Coastal Carolina, and um, Florida State. Sorry, I said four. I meant three. You got Oklahoma State, Coastal Carolina, and Florida uh, coming in at 22, 23, and 24. And then you've got Texas coming in at number 25. They did lose to TCU. Debated about kicking them out. They were number 21 in my rankings. I mean, you could kick them out, but they lost against a top four team. I know they have four losses on the record, but so does Florida, and I'll put them in. I don't think the college football playoff committee puts Florida in their top 25 this week, uh, but I did. I mean, I've, they've been winning a little bit here and there, and or sits in four team. I've got Texas in there. Sits at four team. Um, out of the others receiving votes out of last week, uh, none of those top teams really won this week. Cincinnati didn't. Uh, Kentucky didn't. So you gotta, you gotta put. Um, I feel like you gotta put someone else up. Found Florida. They they've had a few good wins. So I put Florida in at number 24, and then. Um, Texas at number 25. I feel like it'd be a little bit of a better game. This uh, the Florida and Florida State game if Florida was ranked. Um, so I'd like to see them ranked in the college football playoff rankings this next week. Don't think it will happen. If so, they're probably going to be at number 25 or something. Um, but I don't think they've been ranked higher than like 20 this year. I don't think 23 or something like that. I know they were like 23 or 24 when Tennessee played them, but I haven't really kept up with them after that. I don't think they were ranked when they played Georgia, but it made for a better uh, it would make for a better game if they're ranked going in that Florida State game. This is my rankings. I know North Carolina might be a little bit high, but to me, I think that they're they're at a good spot. Ole Miss lost, so you can't really. I don't feel like you can keep them in the top twelve after they. I think they were number eight or nine in my last week's ranking. So uh, I don't really see the top four changing. Uh, well, really, I don't see the top five changing. Um, unless one of them loses. Obviously, Ohio State and Michigan, one of them are going to have to lose because they play each other. I know Ohio State is ranked above Michigan in the AP poll and in the college football playoff ranking poll, um, but I've had Michigan over Ohio State for the last two or three weeks, and they keep winning, so I'm going to keep having them there unless they have a struggle win and Ohio State on that same week blows out their opponent. Then I will put Ohio State over them, but not until then. Or... When Ohio, if Ohio State beats Michigan, I will put them over them. But that's kind of it. I'm going to leave it as that for now, the most impressive. Um, I'm not going to do much of the, oh, well, you know, you you barely won, and, and you know, so I'm going to put you down. I'm not going to do much of that once it gets towards the end here. You know, at the, at the beginning of the year, you can kind of do that. Um, but at the end of the year, I don't think that it's fair really to do that. Like, let's say, you know, TCU, you know, they did they didn't blow out Texas. They only beat them by seven points. But I'm not going to put Tennessee over them just because they blew out their opponent and TCU didn't at, at this point in time. Now, once it gets toward the towards the end of the year again, then potentially because I th I feel like it's relevant at that point, and that's when it really starts to matter. I feel like it's unfair to leave a team out after they've been showing off and blowing teams out. And then leave a team in that's having, having struggle wins over teams that they should be blowing out or, or beating by more than, you know, three points, five points, seven points, whatever. Um, but as of now, uh, unless Georgia came in and had like a really close game against Kentucky or Georgia Tech or something like that, then I don't see them really going down out of that number one spot for now. I think when we go in um, to the college football playoff ranking, I think the final one, I think Georgia will still be number one unless they lose the SEC championship game. Um, I think Georgia, either Michigan or Ohio State will be number two, whoever wins that game against them. And then I think as long as TCU can win out, they'll probably be about number three. 
uh, and, and then win their conference. And then as long as Tennessee can win out and uh, do good, I think that they get in at number four. That's kind of how I see it going is now. And then that would put T Tennessee uh, versus Michigan. I mean, Tennessee versus Georgia. And then Michigan or Ohio State versus TCU. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's been – it for this week, this week 12 Top 25 Rankings. Make sure you go check out my TikTok. I'll put it down in the uh, link below. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment down below what you think of this ranking and why you would change it, if you would change it. And uh, let, let me know why. Let me know who you would put where and uh, kind of what you would do there. This has been your boy TN Smooth saying peace.